Second Bible reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. These words will serve as the basis of this morning's sermon. We hear. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is the word of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's word that we're going to focus on this, uh, this morning was the second Bible reading we heard from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. Let's get meditation on that word. Let's pray. Lord, as we remember your sacrifice, may it motivate us to love others as you have loved us. In your name we pray. Amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, John writes, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Just by the fact that we had the Gospel of John, we had this reading from 1 John, love is a topic that comes up quite a bit by the Apostle. Anyone who loves God must love his brother and sister. How good do we do at that? I'd hope, if I asked, do you love your brother or sister, and we're talking in this relationship of the church, our brother and sister in Christ, that the immediate answer you would be, well, yeah. Yeah, I love my brother and sister, absolutely. I love them. We say it. Do we live it? Are we building our brothers and sisters up? Or do we tear them down? Do we help them when they're in need? Or do we ignore them? Tell ourselves it's not my problem. Do we defend them? Speak well of them? or destroy their reputation? Do we love our brothers and sisters? Because John also says, whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. It's kind of a big gut check to start the sermon, huh? If I don't adequately love my brothers or sisters, that means I can't adequately love God. So hopefully what we're thinking as we start right away is how can we overcome this? How can we change this situation? Yep, we don't always love our brothers and sisters, so how can we love? And John tells us with these verses where we have to start. It starts by being loved. This is love. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. I mean, that is the culmination of love, isn't it? That Jesus laid down his life for us. Probably the very first thought we have comes when we think of the cross. We think of the sacrifice that he made for us to think, has there been anyone else who not just said that they were willing to die for us, but actually didn't? And to think that when Jesus, every insult that he took, every blow that he received, every drop of blood that he bled, every single component of that was done because he loves us. That's the culmination of Jesus laying down his life for us. But we know that he spent 33 years leading up to that, laying down his life for us day in and day out. He did it by laying down his life under the law of God. That, as his brothers and sisters didn't necessarily get along with him and insulted him and refused to believe in him, he didn't lash out with anger. He didn't go and tattle on them. No, he loved. He had compassion. He had pity, not just for his own family members, but anybody and everyone who came to see him. How many hours he spent healing people, preaching to them, teaching them, showing that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that no one comes to the Father except through him. 
This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and gave himself as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus' love for us is a sacrifice. And as we're coming up, it's November 10th today, tomorrow is November 11th. Around here, I think we all know what that day is. It's Veterans Day. I've already mentioned it a couple times, so if you didn't know, you don't know. But on that day, you remember the sacrifices people have made. You look through the annals of the history of our country, you'll find out about 42 million people have served in our military since our nation began, since 1775. You know, right before the Declaration of Independence, all that stuff. Out of that, we have at least 39 people I know of attached to our congregation who have served. Then there's another number. The number is about 1,200,000. 1,200,000 people died so that we could be here today. That we could have the freedoms, that we get to exercise the freedom to meet and exercise our religion without hindrance. The freedom, as uh, if any of you did, this last week there were elections for our local governments. Freedoms to speak our mind and even disagree with those politicians. You think about all these men and women who have served our country in the military. And they have sacrificed. Some have paid that ultimate sacrifice with their life. Others have simply sacrificed their, their lives in terms of their time, their talents. They have lived serving this country. They have done it kind of in much the way that Jesus loved us. Do you figure Jesus loved everyone? Jesus made that sacrifice for every single person in the entire world. Even for the very people who hated him and rejected him, he still sacrificed himself for them. How many other of our military have sacrificed their lives so that other people could disagree with what they're doing? Sacrifice for people who maybe are anti-military. We think about this and we hear Jesus' words. We think about all these sacrifices and we know what love is. Love is that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and the immediate thought that follows and we ought to lay down our lives for brothers, our brothers and sisters. The response to sacrifice. Now with Jesus, we kind of know what we do. We, we know we get together, we hear his word, that we sing praises to his name, we pray to him, we try to live our lives according to his commands. We know that these are the ways that we say thank you to God for his ultimate sacrifice, that we in turn serve him. But he says, love one another as I have loved you, love one another. And so it turns the thought around now to the people we see every day, and yeah, I know not all, all the people who serve in the military are Christians. But still, Jesus' sacrifice motivates us to love one another, to love our brothers and sisters. So what does that look like? Me, I've, I've never enlisted. I have no family that I'm aware of that have served um, in the military. And so moving here, being here, being near an Air Force base, and then it's a very common thing to go out and about and see people in fatigues, to see them in uniform. And I know that they are sacrificing so that I can be here. That I can do what I can do. And so I want to say thank you. But admittedly, I know when it comes to shows of appreciation, not everybody receives that the same way. And the way that I may want to receive gratitude for doing something may not be the same way that another person wants to receive gratitude, so I decided I'll just ask. So I asked a number of veterans, how do you want to be thanked? 
Because I know the other part of this, the part that John talks about. It says that if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? These people, these veterans, are sacrificing for us. How can I show my appreciation? How can I love them as God loved me? So the answers were pretty uniform, and it's maybe just too simple, but all the veterans said, just say thank you. And they also said, don't stare at them, wondering, what should I say? I know I've done that. Because it's going through my head, I want to, I want to show some sort of appreciation. How do I do that? And apparently I just say thank you. Thank you for your service. And that's all they really want. They don't want a big show. They don't want you to announce it over loudspeakers. They don't want you to go around and, and bring them around to everybody and say, you know what this guy did? You know what this person did for me? No, just simple, under the radar, discreet. And if we are in a place where we have these possessions, if we have been blessed by God abundantly, yeah, that's, that's an okay thing if you want to pay for a meal pay for a drink. But again, I was told don't make a big show out of it. In fact, some said don't even ask. Just do it. Because if you ask, they're going to say no. Because they can handle themselves. And maybe even focus on those who are maybe younger. Because, you know, they probably don't have the advantages of those who are older, those who have been serving longer. Just simple little things. And I came to think about those when they're deployed. It's going to be a pretty tough time. For the ones who are in the service, who are deployed, I was told, just simply remember that's where we are. We didn't just drop off the face of the earth. We didn't just stop coming to church. But we're serving our country. And if you have access, if you have ability, let them know, hey, we remember you. We were thinking about you. That maybe you find yourself in a place that you can share something with them that you've just read from the Bible, that you can build them up as a brother or sister in Christ. I mean, something so simple as Psalm 23. Reminding them that the Lord is their shepherd, that he is walking with them every single day, through every single danger. And this is what's appreciated. But then there's also the families, the families of those who are deployed. Now, I was told again through these surveys that I did that, first of all, don't assume they need help. Don't assume they can't handle it. Because, as I was told by many, they're tough. They knew what they were getting into. They knew what they were signing up for. And they probably are self-sufficient. So if you do ask to help with something and they say no, don't think, well, they just don't like me. No, no, they probably actually can't handle it. But it can be a lonely time. And even though they're tough and they can handle it, it doesn't mean we should ignore them. Maybe all it takes is simply reaching out and being a friend. Maybe... It's just sitting down, talking with them so that they don't feel so alone. Maybe what it is is if they have kids that you come in, maybe offer some babysitting so that the other person could go and run some errands without the kids, or maybe just have some time at home for some me time where they're not just taking care of kids. If you're handy, offer what you can do. If you have the extra time, the ability, maybe you can help with yard work. Maybe, maybe you want to start something else out. And I know like in the Air Force and other military programs, they have something similar to this. In the Air Force, it's called the Key Spouse Program that just meant specifically to help the families of those who are deployed. But that's only as good as the people running it. So as the church, we can offer different things. We offer a family of faith. A family 
where we gather together united by just one thing, and that's our God. To pray for these people, to pray with these people, to remind them that we have a God who is powerful, who is watching over all of us, and who is going to see us through anything that comes. Now, I'm sure there's a whole lot more ways that we can show our appreciation, and I kind of, when I sent out the surveys, I thought I would get these, these really cool, intricate things that I could share with you, but it really came down to simply say thank you, if you want to, and do it discreetly. Don't make a big show of it. And it's so simple. And yet, that's just one way, a simple way, Every single one of us can show gratitude to those who have put their lives on the line so that we can be here and enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy. But at this point, I've talked a whole lot about just what to do. I've just done a whole lot of talking, and I know that. John tells us, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. So maybe I've spent too much time talking. Because the real point is to go and do, to go and act, to show the love of God with these expressions of attitude instead of just talking about doing this. So for the times that I fail to love my brothers and sisters, for the times that I fail to show gratitude for the people who have served me without even knowing me, who have sacrificed for me without me ever loving them. For that, Lord, forgive me. Instead, we come back to the greatest soldier and his greatest sacrifice. The one that no veteran could give us. No one person could ever die and free us from sins, free us from the, the control of the devil, free us from an eternity in hell, but Jesus did. He laid down his life so that we would have these eternal freedoms. And for that, Lord, we are eternally grateful and help us show that each day with our lives, with how we act, with our speech, how we treat one another. So first of all, Lord, we thank you for sacrificing yourself as our great soldier so that we would be freed from sin, death, and the devil. Now, Lord, help us to love in action and in truth the people who sacrifice for us. So for all of you who are veterans here today, thank you. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.